Today I'm going to talk about linear regression. Linear regression, commonly known as OLS, or Ordinary Least Squares, is a very simple yet powerful method to explain the relationship between features and outcomes. This is the beauty of OLS. Unlike the methods that we have looked at so far, such as decision trees or KNN, uh, that it was very difficult to explain how the changes in one feature would lead to changes in the outcome, uh, OLS can, can give a very uh, clear answer to that and tell us how specifically the final outcome that we were trying to predict or uh, trying to explain is going to change as a result of changes in uh, any of the features. And that is why I have uh, emphasized on the word explain rather than predict. Although, uh, in practice, they both mean the same. When you explain something as a factor uh, or a function of a bunch of other features, you're basically predicting it. But uh, th th that is the reason that I have uh, used the word explain instead of, uh, instead of predict. All right, uh, let's see how... Uh, how OLS works using an example. And in this example, suppose that you want to see how much you can improve your grade if you study one more hour in this course. So basically, you're, uh, you're interested in explaining the relationship between uh, prepara preparations for the course in terms of, you know, studying and, uh, and the final grade. So, uh, what you're going to do about it, you're going to go collect data. Suppose that these are the uh, 10 observations that you have from the students that took this course in the last semester. So uh, basically you have one feature and that is hours studied and, that is, and you also have one grade and that is your outcome. And there are 10 observations here. So for example, the first student studied only three hours for this course and that student ended up with a grade of 55. But there was another student that studied 37 hours and ended up with a grade of 100. So the very first thing that you can do is to create a scatter plot of these observations that you have. You basically create a two-dimensional plot. On the x-axis, you have the hours studied. And on the y-axis, you have the grade. And you just plot every point on this two-dimensional plot. So the very first, uh, the very first one is uh, three hours studied and got a grade of 55. It would be a, a per, at this point. As you can see, the x corresponds to 3 and the grade corresponds to 55 on the grade axis. Let's emphasize on this uh, scatter plot, and I've just enlarged it here. And it seems like that there is a linear re uh, relationship between the hours of studied and the grade, in the sense that it seems like you can uh, draw a line that goes through these uh, points and can explain the uh, relationship between hours of studied and grade pretty well. And this is actually that line, right? You can fit a line uh, uh, to, to basically explain or to predict the relationship between hours of studied and the grade. In the sense that for a point like here, so if you have somebody who has studied 20 hours, you would be able to say that, oh, this person is very likely to get a grade of 80, right? Uh, despite the fact that you don't have an actual observation, but if you have this regression line, you can use it to predict, right? So in this particular example, for example here, uh, you don't have any person who has actually studied 35 hours, right? There's no dots on this particular place, but you can tell me that if somebody has studied 35 hours, then uh, the predicted grade for that person is also going to be uh, close to 100, right? But the question is, how to choose the best line? Because it appears that there are many other lines that you can fit through this. And, you know, although when you look at them visually, they seem that they are not the best line, but what is the criteria for you to choose the best line? How, how would you know that the line that you have drawn is the best possible line? An OLS, or linear regression algorithm, is basically uh, trying to answer that question.
Let's use this line uh, because it's very simple to explain the OLS uh, algorithm. The very first step is to find the distance between each of these points. Remember, these are uh, each point represents one observation, uh, the hours studied and the grade, right? So we're go the very first step is to calculate the distance between each of these points and the uh, line that you have. This particular uh, purple line. So you calculate the first distance, second distance, and uh, and so on. And then uh, you know here is an example of how to do it. Uh, the distance, or in other words, the error would be the, uh, the 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 distance between the actual point and the line. Uh, and for the first for the first point, for example, the actual value was fifty five. And uh, the predicted value uh, was 75. Why is it 75? Because if you look at the look at the purple line, the grade for this person, the predicted grade for this person is about 75, right? This is the 75 point on the y-axis. So we are going to calculate the error, in other words, the distance between the actual value and the predicted value and call it the error. Here, it's going to be 55, this is the actual grade that the person got, minus the predicted grade for that person, and you will end up with negative 20. And you can do this for all the points. Uh, for example, for the very last point, the uh, error would be actual value, which is uh, 90, uh, minus the predicted value, which is 75, uh, and in this uh, case, it would end up being equal to 15, okay? Now, uh, one thing to notice is that here, when you had basically overestimated the grade of a person, the actual grade was 55, but you thought that the person is going to get a, a, a 75, uh, your error would be negative, whereas... Uh, here, where you had underestimated the grade of the person, the person supposed that got an actual grade of 90, but you had predicted the person is going to get 75, you would have a positive error, right? Uh, so here is negative 20, and here is 15. Uh, in order to get rid of the cancellation effect of these things on each other, uh, we're going to just uh, square them, okay? So... Uh, the step two would be the squaring the distances so that regardless of whether you're underestimating or overestimating, the error square will always be a positive value. So in the first example, you would square the uh, difference between 55 and 75, which was negative 20, and it would be 400. And in the other case, it is going to be 225. In other words, the square is always a positive value, right? So once you have that, you can go ahead and calculate the sum of squared errors, meaning that once you have calculated the uh, squared error for all of these uh, observations in your data set, you're going to add them up together. Okay, and that would be called the sum of squared errors, or commonly known as SSE. Once you have calculated that uh, sum of the square errors, your whole objective is going to be to find the line that minimizes that SSE, right? Uh, so in the examples that we talked about, we said that you can have multiple lines, right? Uh, this uh, this line would have a particular SSE. This line would have an, another SSE, or this line is going to have another SSE, right? The line that best fits these points is the line that has the smallest uh, sum of the square errors, meaning that it is the line that is the closest to all of these points overall, okay? So uh, now the question is, all right, uh, we understand that why we should find the line that minimizes the SSE, that has the lowest sum of the square errors, but how are we going to find it? Uh, well, that needs some introduction to some terms, intercept and slope. Every line in a two-dimensional space can be described by a unique intercept and a unique slope. 
and it can be represented uh, through a very simple formula. In this case, you can say that y is going to be a function of a plus b multiplied by x, in which a is your intercept and b is your slope. Now, what is the intercept? In this particular line, uh, intercept is going to be the distance uh, from the origin, right? So how far your y is from the origin, right? Here it appears to be about 18, for example. And what is a slope? A slope is how steep the line is. In other words, how much the uh, y is going to increase by changes in x, right? So delta y divided by delta x is your, is your slope, right? Uh, so if we define each line, using this general formula uh, as uh, y is equal a plus b to bx, then we can, uh, we can write the error square using this formula, right? So for each point, in this particular example, for the very first point, we can write error square as yi. yi is the actual value. In this case, you remember it was 55 minus a plus b x i and a is our intercept of this line plus b uh, which is the slope and x i is the value of x in this particular point which is i think three hours right so you can write y i minus a plus b multiplied by three to the power of two what you have to note here is that A and B, which are your intercept and slope, are two parameters, meaning that they're two unknowns, all right? Uh, so we are going to do the same for all these uh, points that we have here, and then uh, we are going to, again, calculate the sum of the squared errors uh, using this formula that we've already talked about. The only difference here is that the A plus uh, BXI, which is the formula of the line, uh, in which A and B are parameters. They are unknowns, right? We have to find A and B. Uh, and, uh, and basically, uh, that, is, uh, that is the values that are going to minimize the sum of the square errors. Those are the values that are going to minimize this function. Now, uh, the question is, uh, how are we going to do that? Well, it's very simple. You're going to uh, solve the partial derivatives of the SSE functions with respect to A and B. In other words, you take the partial derivative with respect to A, uh, equated to zero, and you take the partial derivative of SSE with respect to B, you equate it to zero, and then you will have a system of equations and when you solve it, it will give you the optimal value of A and optimal value of B. And the good news is that you don't have to worry about this. It's all done by computers, right? Nobody does it by hand anymore. Uh, and in this particular line, uh, the, in this particular example, basically, the optimal line would have an intercept of 51.568 and a slope of 1.41.4. Seven four whatever. Okay, uh, so this is the intercept and this is the slope that would uh, minimize the distance of this line from all these points. Okay, remember that you can never find a line that is fitting all these points uh, precisely. You are always going to have some error. For example, here you see that you are overestimating, right? Uh, the, you're, you're still not going through the exact point, you're going above it. Or in, in, in this uh, point, you're going a little bit below it, okay? However, uh, you cannot do better than this, meaning that this is the line that has the lowest SSE. SSE is not zero, but it is the lowest that it can be. okay? And that would be your regression line. Now using this intercept, and this slope, uh, you can predict the grade for uh, any number of hours that I uh, give you to predict. So again, uh, you know, if you put in 20 here, it would be uh, the predicted grade for somebody who has studied for 20 hours would be 51.56 plus 
1.4 multiplied by 20 hours. And whatever that number is, is going to be the prediction of your OLS algorithm for the grade. Now, a uh, very important point here is to figure out how to interpret the slope, or in this particular example, it would be 1.41, right? That is the slope, the estimate of the slope. In other words, the, the parameter B that we have estimated. And the interpretation is that with a one unit increase in the X uh, or the feature that you're, that you're uh, looking at, the value of the outcome Y increases by B unit, okay? In this particular example that we've solved it, you can say with a one hour here, with a one hour increase in the number of uh, hours studied, the outcome, which is the grade, is going to increase by 1.4 units, all right? So how much you can increase your grade if you study two hours is going to be uh, 2.42 units. Why? Because with one hour of increase in studying, you increase your overall grade by 1.4. Therefore, with two hours of studying, you would increase it by 2.8 points, okay? Now, the example that we went through here was, a, was the simplest uh, example in which you only had one feature, okay? You only had the number of hours of study. In reality, the number of features will be much more, uh, and you can still use OLS. Uh, the only difference is that you would increase the number of features, uh, but the fundamental concepts and the approach uh, to solve for and figure out the parameters is going to remain exactly the same. Here, in our example, you may say that, uh, you know, uh, in addition to the number of hours of study, the IQ of the student would also impact the grade, so it would be more realistic or uh, you would have an algorithm with higher prediction power if you have two features uh, that are going to predict the final grade. In other words, you would have both IQ and hours studied, and then you can see uh, the impact of each of these on the final grade, and you would have a better prediction power.